We are here in Sandusky, Ohio, and my guest is Greg Huber. Greg, how you doing? Doing well. Uh, what do you do, Greg? What do I do? Yeah, for well, a living. For a living. Oh, well, I'm an IT director over at the Andersons uh, Incorporated. So it's a agricultural supply chain company, about maybe about five to $10 billion revenue this year. So I, I lead a team of software engineers, uh, data, you know, data and analytics team, as well as a digital solutions team. And you've got a second job this week. Yes. Tell us about yeah. that. So my, my second job this week is uh, I am leading the Codemash Makerspace. And I've been doing, I've been involved with Codemash since pretty much since the beginning, a speaker in the earlier years. And then uh, for the last 10 years or so, I've been volunteering and helping in some capacity. So the, the latest, probably about uh, the last conference we had back in 2020, we did our first makerspace, which was kind of an experiment, mm -hmm. and we decided to improve upon it and build upon it, and that's that's what we're and doing. That's where year. we are right now. We're in the maker space. You can see right now the people aren't here. This is packed full of yes. uh, uh, adults and kids and that's right. excited people. Uh, just a few hours ago, uh, take us around. Let's take a tour. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So over here we have our maker museum. It's uh, it's not super exciting this year. We didn't really publicize it too much, but the idea is makers of any sort can bring pretty much bring anything made. Um, so something that they've built, whether it be, you know, maybe a kit they found online or something entirely, you know, it's created by themselves. So I'll walk you through a few of the yeah, things yeah. that we have here. So this is a, this is an example of a kit. It's a 3d printed, uh, UFO that you can buy alien 3d.us. They sell these. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is a jewel thief flashlight flashlight mm -hmm. from a company called just add filament. And it's probably about a half hour, job of just soldering really great uh, makerspace classic here mm -hmm. this is a custom designed pcb by one of our pre-compiler speakers paul pagel pcb is printed circuit board printed, yep and you can see that uh you have to solder this thing together and there's actually some really challenging soldering going on here so we have like a decade counter which is an smd component we also have a 555 timer and a number of uh, resistors and uh, ceramic capacitors here. Old school stuff. It is, yeah. This is before they made Arduino. So, but it basically gives you this really cool uh, LED, you know, sequence here with a uh, with some kind of beady eyes on the alien. <laughs> so one of my favorites this year. Um, and then there's a little switch that you can turn it off. And then this was a uh, this was a project that we did a couple of years ago. And this is a game controller. I would turn it on, but the battery's dead. So I don't think it'll show up very well. Yeah. This is one of my favorites, another Just Add filament. It's a useless box. This is something I put together as well. So <laughs> you can see there's batteries and a, and a motor here. And then uh, and let's just move on. Yeah. So this is a game that I 3D printed uh, called the Tippy Tree. And it's kind of like Jenga. You Anybody can, that has a 3D printer can download and print this and you can see you kind of stack it up, right? Uh, until it falls over. Yeah. yeah. It's a really, exactly, really fun party game. I don't really know what this is. Somebody brought it in. They did not fill out the sheet. Let's press it and see what my, uh, nothing yeah, happens. It's, it's another not, useless it, box. It, it, yeah, <laughs> it, pretty much. So maybe we'll find more. Um, this one, so Sam Hollifield is one of our uh, previous pre-compiler speakers. So he's got an automatic adversarial node. So you can, yeah, I mean, I'm assuming it does evil things to your car. Uh, <laughs> so I'm not going to turn it on. I don't know about you, but. Ah, uh, what's the worst <laughs> thing that happen? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, this one's really cool. All oh, safety glasses, you know, always yeah. got to be safe. But this one here, a guy, a uh, young man named Andrew Fuller. We were talking about him earlier. Yeah, really cool story. So he has been coming to Codemash for over 10 years, yeah. and he was inspired many years ago uh, when I believe it was Bill Steele had brought his 3D printer in and was oh, printing yeah. little Bill, chess Bill sets. Bill was on the show many years ago. Yeah, so <laughs> Andrew, so 10 years ago, uh, Andrew gets inspired. Every code mesh since then, he's been thinking about 3D printing. He got a printer and he created this. So he learned how to do CAD. Uh, this is inspired by Portal 2. It's uh, something you might see in the game. It, it has seen better days, but <laughs> I mean, you know, the kid's 19 years old, made this. It's pretty impressive. So he started th that uh, interaction with Bill was when he was like nine years old. Yeah, exactly. Just a little kid with bright eyes yep. learning about technology. And, and here he is. And oh, he, cool. he just gave a kid's mesh session on 3D printing today as well. Oh, that's a great story. Over here, this is another one. Sam Hollifield's working on this, but this is something, it's a 
pretty cool axe, but it's kind of like Guitar Hero style. Um, I don't think it's done yet, but it has a Arduino on the back. You can plug it in. Yep, I don't see it. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it's still in, in progress, but this is a hacker bar. So this is going on. Tomorrow is going to be another day of Maker. Yes. We had another one here, um, but it, it's, uh, I won't talk about stuff that. Here. Yeah. <laughs> so then we've got, this is a sign that I made a couple of years ago. Uh, carved on the Glowforge laser. That's so, the Code Mash logo. Yep, Code Mash logo here, and then just a little makerspace. Does that guy have a name? Uh, we just call him the Gearhead logo. Gearhead, so, okay. <laughs> uh, nothing too exciting. And then, uh, you know, we've tricked this sign out with some LEDs as well as this guy here. Um, and then. Uh, What's the speakers for? Is that just something? Yeah, speakers. So, this, uh, we don't have it turned on right now, but it there's a web radio that plays through here, and we just kind of, you know, augment the space with some some electronica or rock classic rock music on a web radio cool. so uh moving along so i brought three of my printers from my my home three printers. of how many do you have i, I have a lot but uh, i won't go into that single that's, digits or uh yeah it's it's still <laughs> single but uh that's only because my wife makes me she limits me to how many i can have on hand at a <laughs> okay. time so that's fair uh, but this guy is printing out one of the cool things we're doing this year is we're printing out bounty little bounty hunter things and uh, we're hiding them so this isn't a bounty hunter but it gives you an idea of the scope so we'll hide this is a moai but uh, yeah. these are being handed out for out. yeah for for people who finish sessions early or whatever it is but we're hiding these throughout the conference and basically uh as people find these uh bounty hunters they can then go and redeem them in the 3d printer lab next door and then they can basically be entered to a like a drawing where we're going to give away a foot tall Boba Fett. Oh, um, very cool. Yeah, so this one is printing, uh, this is a Prusa Mini and it's printing cases for the game controller that we built in Paul Pagel's precompiler talk. Now, I, I was here earlier and this doesn't look much different, huh? How long does it take to print something like that? I want to say this one is probably around a three and a half hour print, okay. if I remember right. So, yeah, I mean, it's there's not much to it, right? But printers are. Mostly not that, they're still not all that fast, but I will show you one more printer that actually could, if, if we had a big enough bed, he could probably print it in about an hour mm -hmm. or even less because okay. this is a custom hobby built printer called a Boron 0.1. And this printer is, uh, it's smaller, but it's very well constrained. And as you can see, it's also a lot smaller, but it allows me to print really high quality, really fast. So mm -hmm. okay. any, roughly about two to three times faster. And for those that haven't seen a few, 3D printer, it's essentially melting yeah. this filament. plastic filament. A lot of people and are. And then shaping it into whatever shape you've designed, and the yeah. computer tells it what the shape should yep. be. Yep, and we, a lot of times we'll use CAD uh, mm -hmm. to design something, and then uh, we'll slice it with the slicing software, which cuts it up layer by layer, and then it gives G code instructions to the machine that processes it in I real see. time. Hmm. Yeah, so. And that's uh, that's pretty much the main the main items here. Uh, we have soldering irons on the desk. So people come here and learn how to solder. Yeah, It'll be a good exactly. trade to learn. Actually, if you don't mind, uh, you want to be on camera for a little bit. <laughs> okay, that's fair. So, anyway, so there's the soldering space here. So soldering station, an exa you, you kind of see one work in process here. So someone's working on a UFO and they've kind of got their stuff laid out here. <laughs> but uh, soldering iron is all you really need to do this. Um, it is helpful if you know how to do hot air rework, but this is not a beginner project. This one is the advanced, <laughs> but we do have a beginner project kit, and I'll, I'll show you that real quick. How much guidance do you give these folks? Uh, we actually have a session, so Jamie Hampton is giving the learn to solder session, and it's guided, or you can do it self-paced, and the instructions are pretty straightforward. So this is, uh, this is actually what the kit looks like, and I do have a, unfortunately I don't have one, working right now or that's here but uh and i don't think the instructor or the uh so i'll have to see if i can find you a picture and maybe you can augment the video but mm -hmm. the idea is you've got a couple of big leds you, mm -hmm. you plop them in and then you solder some capacitors transistors resistors and then you get the uh, leds to blink off off and on and there's a i don't know if you can see it here but there's a little code mask logo nice. and when you peel this off it, it makes a really cool edge lit led effect oh i see so this is a good project. Now this is a little more, it's, it's a beginner, but we have had folks that put the transistors in backwards, put the resistors in the wrong spot. So when they do that, it's, it's not necessarily a bad thing because then we teach them how to desolder it, mm -hmm. uh, you know, how to maybe how to use a hot air rework station. But, um, my daughter's a great example. It's her first year as a staff at CodeMesh, but she put one of these together 
and uh, the next day she put the UFO together. So she learned how to solder the basic one in one day and then the advanced one in the next day. So it's really cool coming to Code Mesh and being, being able to walk away with a new skill. Excellent. Well, she could bring her on camera, but we've already promised we won't. <laughs> yeah. So. I think she might be in the background with a couple shots. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I'm off right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is very cool. So you did this is the second year you had this. Yeah. Are you going to keep this? Is going to be a tradition at Code Mesh? Yeah, I believe so. I mean, we're going to, I think um, we've, we've gotten good feedback that people really enjoy this type of thing and they enjoy coming in and learning a new skill. It may not be quite as mainstream as uh, learning maybe the latest way to do it, the latest JavaScript library, right. right, or whatever it may be. But the way the world is converging now with IoT and with software, yeah. um, ITOT, all that, this is a great skill to learn. I know a lot of companies are looking for this type of skill set, like just mixing in the uh, electronics along mm -hmm. with the software. So this is a great space to be, and I think I, I think we're going to continue building this space at CodeMash. So. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, Greg, thanks so much for your time. This is really fun. Yeah, thanks a lot, Dave. <laughs>